Hi everyone and happy Halloween. I will be sc sharing th three scary stories for this spectacular Halloween. Now then, let's stop with the chit chat and let's get to the stories. Number one, a small cat. There was once a small child who didn't have any friends. All the kids that she went to school with made fun of her for not having a pet when they did. Every day after school she would beg her parents for a pet, but they always replied with, now isn't a good time dear. So she waited and waited, but she never got a pet. It wasn't until she got to junior high that her parents called her out of her room for a surprise. She walked down the stairs to see a box with holes in the front of them. She ultimately knew what it was and opened the box to see a small cat. She was happy and thanked her parents profusely for the small thing. Her happiness, however, was short-lived. When weird and strange things started to happen, she would wake to find her cat staring at her, her parents would find things missing from where they had been before. Her parents thought that she was playing a prank on them, even though she kept denying it. One night, however, she had woken to sound. A scratching? She looked around. It wasn't coming from her door. It was open a bit. Then she decided to go downstairs to see if she could find it. Just as she got to her door, her, drop, her cat jumped in front of her. She looked down at the cat that its eyes were a bit worried looking. She picked up the cat and closed the door and went back to bed. The cat meowed as if to say, don't go down there at all. She didn't think much of it. She put the cat in its bed next to hers and laid down on her bed and fell asleep. It wasn't until morning that she realized that her cat was gone. She went downstairs and saw something that she wished was a nightmare. She saw her mother standing over her father, but only he wasn't breathing. Her mother turned and saw her. Don't worry, dear, said her mother. We'll be all together forever. The girl screamed, and, as if on cue, her cat leaped onto her and leaped at her mother, clawing at her eyes. The mother threw the cat off, but the girl had been smart and grabbed a lamp that was, on, that was nearby and knocked her mother unconscious. She grabbed the cat and ran to her closest neighbor. She banged on the door, and when the neighbor answered, she told them everything. The neighbor looked, looked took her inside and offered to call the cops. The girl cat... The girl sat with her cat, but when she turned around, the neighbor was staring at her angrily. She was confused, and that's when she saw it. Her cat was not a cat, but a being that was protecting her. The neighbor lunged at her with a pocket knife that had not been there before. The being that was once her cat stopped him dead in his tracks and said, No, she must leave this town to live. She was confused, and the being threw her neighbor at the wall, grabbed her, and ran to the forest. He turned and said to her, Listen, I was exactly like you. The only reason I survived because I was agreed to protect anyone from enduring the same fate that I nearly had. He then put her down and said, I need you to change your appearance. That town will hunt you forever. I need to go back into the form you first got me in. I will follow you every step of the way. With that, he shifted back into the cat and the girl's life was forever haunted hunted by the people she saw as friends and was forever on the run for her life. To this day, some say that her spirit is still lurking across the land wanting to know more about her hometown and help others like her. So what you think of that story? Made it up myself. That's only something small so be prepared. Second story, a simple meal. Ah, what a nice meal to bring people together. However, that's not the case here. But this couple had a different type of dinner. The young man's name was Lucas and this young lady's name was Cindy. The two had planned the most romantic dinner that they have had yet and it was at a small restaurant. They had made the reservation and both got ready, not knowing what they had just gotten themselves into. Lucas had gotten ready and had driven to Cindy's house and was waiting for her. Soon she got into the car and, they, and he drove them to the restaurant. When they arrived, they stepped into the building to be welcomed by a waitress in a strange smell haunting the air. They were seated and given menus. They both looked at each other with confusion, as if as they looked through the menu. Everything was named after a limb or an organ. They both thought that it was just to go along with the Halloween spirit, since the day itself wasn't far away. Then the waitress came back with their drinks. Cindy asked, I'm sorry, but can someone open a window, please? Lucas nodded in agreement. The waitress nodded as if to say that she doesn't blame them and walked away. They talked for a bit when Winnie ha Cindy had to use the leave to use the restroom. As she left, the waitress came back and asked, do you want to wait for her to come back or do you want to order now? Lucas responded, 
responded with, yes, I'll order for her. She'd tell me what she wanted before she left. He gave her their orders and waited. He decided to go on his phone to wait for his girlfriend. He was so distracted that he didn't even notice how much time had passed. He looked up from his phone and had noticed that his girlfriend was not back yet. He knew that she carried on her phone on her at all times and decided to try and call her. But just when he was about to call her, the waitress came and said that their food would be ready soon. He, a he asked if she had seen his girlfriend, to which she responded, I'm sorry, dear. I haven't seen, I haven't seen she went to the, into the restroom. As the waitress walked away, he tried to call her phone. But just as he did, there was a ringing near the waitress and she stopped. He looked at her as she put out Cindy's phone and he said, Why do you have her phone? The waitress stood motionless and about after a minute responded, Why would you say something like that? This is my phone. He could tell that she was nervous about it. He then asked where she where she was really. The waitress turned around and was smiling. Please go back and sit at your table, sir. Your food will be out soon. With that, he left, which, okay. with that, she left, and he was speechless. That was when he decided to sneak into the restroom and see if Cindy was still in there. It took him a while, but he got in, but he got there. When he looked inside, he called out for Cindy. No answer. He looked in every single stall and saw that she was nowhere to be seen. He hurried back out of the restroom and went to the counter and asked for the manager. He came out and asked what was wrong. Lucas told him about how his girlfriend had gone from the bathroom and how he saw the waitress had her phone. The manager looked puzzled and decided to look at the cameras. We have cameras in almost every room here, except parts of the restroom, but that's for privacy reasons, he assured him. They looked at each other when they reviewed the footage and immediately called the authorities. The waitress had apparently put a drug into Cindy's drink and caused her to go unconscious and tried to hide her. Her reason? She claimed that she was much better for Lucas and was taken away. It had been years since, and Lucas and Cindy are still together. One night while Cindy was visiting her parents, Lucas heard the faint sound of tapping and heard at the door, Are you ready to order now? So, how's that story? Bay will be more cautious on dinner dates now. Okay, on to the next story. Number three, a Hallow's Eve tale. Halloween, a time of year for friends to hang out and have fun. It wasn't for these friends, however. The four friends were a boy named Harry, a boy named Chase, another boy named John, and finally, a girl named Lily. They were out one Halloween night and were having a great time. Their bags were filled with loads of candy, their costumes were fantastic, and they were together. They went from house to house gathering candy. I think that we have enough candy, guys, Chase said while turning around to his friends. Lily didn't like that and responded, Oh, come on, just one more house and we'll go home. The three boys looked at each other and Chase finally said, All right, just one more house, but we need to be quick, okay? Lily nodded and the four of them walked to their final house. Not knowing what awaited them, John was the first to reach the house and knocked on the door and waited for the others. When the door opened, they all said, trick or treat. The man who answered the door did not look happy and replied with, go home, brats. With that, he slammed the door and the four looked at each other. All right, I'm ready to go home now, Lily said with a disappointed voice. The four friends started to walk towards Lily's house as they had agreed to have a sleep over there. When they got in there, John looked behind them and nearly went pale. Let's get inside now, he said as he heard them inside and locked the door. What the heck, John? Lily said a bit irritated. John looked out the window on the door. I swear I saw someone out there. Harry laughed and replied, come on man, Halloween is practically over, so, more, so no more jokes. All of them went to the living room and started watching a movie. It was all quiet when, bang, someone was at the door. Lily went pale and looked at John. Please tell me that you locked the door, she whispered. John nodded and turned off the TV. They waited for something to happen, but nothing did. Harry looked out the window and froze. It's that man that slammed the door on us. Lily went even more pale and said, we need, we need to call someone. Chase went for the phone and as he was about to call 911, crash! The window on top of the door had been smashed. Lily screamed and John immediately hushed her. Henry went, to went for Lily's softball bat that was in the living room because she had a game 
in a few days and waited by the door. The man began banging on the door. It was so loud that Lily thought that the door might actually break. The door finally gave way and the man just stood there for a good, mo for a good minute before saying, should have gone home and not my house. With that, Harry swung at the man's leg and kicked him to the ground. Chase called the police and when they got, here, got there, the four made a horrifying discovery. The man was a convicted felon with a fourth degree murder in the house and was hiding in the house that Lily, Chase, Harry, and John had gone to as their last house of, the, of that night. Years later, Lily and Harry are together and still friends with Chase and John. They were hanging out when they got a notification on their phones that a convicted felon, had ex a convicted felon on death row had escaped and when they showed the picture, the four knew that they had to be prepared for they knew that they were the ones who got him caught in the first place. I think that's enough stories for now. What did you all think? What was your favorite story? Anyway, I'm afraid I'll have to say goodbye. And remember, it's always a great day to be a leopard and happy Halloween.